Dear future doctors, today is 13th of August 2021 and you are joining with the 11th IMAT discussion session with SprinterTest.com. We have updated our site so uh, you can visit and uh, sign up for further courses. The first 10 people will receive free seats and uh, the rest will have to pay a small uh, sum of money in order to continue the course. Anyhow, today uh, we have a very special guest. I will reveal about him during our first question discussion. Therefore, without a further ado, let's move to the first question of the day. Today we have a piece of paper. A piece of paper is laid on a table in landscape orientation. Example, the longer side running left to right and the shorter side running top to bottom. This piece of paper is then folded in half four times alternately by moving the left hand side across over the right hand side and folding and by moving the top half down over the bottom half and then folding. After each fold a dot is made with a pen in the center of the face showing on the table. After the four folds and four dots the paper is unfolded in the reverse sequence and is then turned over so that the four dots are showing. What is the pattern of the dots on the paper? Dotted lines represent the fold marks. Okay, so we have given the answers. Uh, I will give you five seconds. Within these five seconds, you can pause the video and select an answer. Then we will discuss what is the correct answer. Your time has started and time up. The correct answer is B. In order to explain, I would like to introduce Mr. Osher from Israel. He is a second year student who studies medicine in uh, Pavia University and he's a tutor for medical students. So I'm uh, very thankful for Osher for joining with us and uh, I would like to uh, invite you for the explanation part. Hello, my name is uh, Osher Mizrahi and I'm a second year student at the University of Pavia. Um, and I want to thank Andrew for hosting me in this discussion. Um, the two questions will be from IMAT from the 2020 test. And uh, let's get started. So the first question, as you can see, is about the piece of paper. Uh, on a table in landscape orientation. Um, this piece of paper is then folded in half four times, alternatively by moving the left-hand side, cross over the right-hand side and then folding, and by moving the top half down over the bottom half and then folding. So if we understand the uh, instructions correctly, we have this kind of pe uh, piece of paper and first we fold over this axis, and secondly, we fold over this axis after it was already folded. Um, so this, this occurs four times in total. After each fold, a dot is made with a pen in the center of the face showing on the table. So for example, after the first fold, we get a piece of paper which is half the size with a dot in its center. Okay, after the four folds and four dots, the paper is unfolded in the reverse sequence and is then turned over so that the four dots are showing. So they open it up back um, and they turn it over, but they don't tell us in which way they turn it over. So that's a detail we need to pay attention to because there are two ways to turn it over. We can turn it over top to bottom, or we, we can turn it over right to left axis. And this changes the positions of the dots um, on the paper. So the question is, what is the pattern of the dots on the paper? And we're given a couple of options here. So let's work by process of elimination and look at the first dot. So if we did the first fold, left to right, 
just as the instruction says. And we left the dot in the center of the face that's in front of us. And then eventually we unfolded the paper. And then if we unfolded the paper, we'll see that the dot will be here at the center of the left-hand side half of the paper, but it will be on the back. But what happens if we turn it over? So there are two ways to turn it over. The first one is right to left. Okay, that's the first way. And if we turn it over right to left, the point just switches, switch places because we turned over the page to the side. And the second way is top to bottom. In which case, the dot stays in the same place. Well, you know, it's apparent to us. So let's go and look in the answers. If we can find any of the answers that fit either this description, the first one, or the second. So the first one lies in the center of the right half. So it's not A, it, it can be B because we can see here, not C, not D, nor E. Or a piece of paper with the dot in the left-hand side in the center, and we cannot find it. You might think it may be C or A, but it's not exactly in the center. It's not here. It's upwards up. So these aren't viable options. So since we worked by the process of elimination and checked both options and only found from both options, only one option that works in the answers, we can all, all already know that, that the answer is B. And this is how you save time in the exam and not go through each of the foldings and just try to understand from the first fold. Um, because there are many details in here. Uh, and many actions to do. So this is why it's the best course of action just to, to first understand the concept and then see how uh, it works in the answers as well. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Osha. Thank you so much. I hope we will be able to conduct another discussion session. So for now, have a great time. Let's move to the second question of the day. Which of the following statements about a neuron in healthy human is or are correct. Number one, transport across its cell membrane can occur by exocytosis. Number two, it contains the gene that codes for insulin. Number three, it contains circular DNA. Answers are A, one and two only, B, one and three only, C, one, two and three, D, two and three only, E, one only. Your time starts now. Timer. The correct answer is 1, 2, and 3. In order to answer this question, let's have a look of a neuron cell. We can see this is the neuron anatomy. We have dendrites, nucleus, axon, myelin sheath, Schwann cell, node of Ranvier, and the soma. We have axon terminal. This is the general structure we need to study about this. And we need to know about transport across cell membrane. There are three types of transports across the cell membrane. Active transport, passive transport and vesicular transport. Under active transportation, we can see diffusion and osmosis. Then under passive, we can see primary and secondary. Under vesicular transport, we can see endocytosis, exocytosis and transcytosis. So exocytosis is one of the main transport methods. So number one is correct. When it comes to the neuron cell, it is a human cell. So indeed, it's a eukaryotic cell. Therefore, we can find all the features which are present in the eukaryotic cell. 
we can see the mitochondria we can see the nucleus we can see the cellular dna everything is present ribosomes rer scr everything is there right so when we have the cellular dna the third answer is correct and one more thing when a zygote is born when a zygote is formed the same zygote keeps multiplying until a baby and the baby keeps multiplying the same number of chromosomes the same number of genes until he becomes an old person and dies so the number of chromosomes the number of genes and the pattern of genes are the same throughout all our body cells therefore the code which requires to produce insulin is present in our gene therefore the second answer is also correct now let's move to the third question of the day which of the following is correct about carbon to carbon bonds number one the length of carbon to carbon bonds increases in the order carbon to carbon triple bonds carbon to carbon double bonds carbon to carbon bond number two the strength of the carbon to carbon double bond is less than twice the strength of the carbon to carbon single bond number three the carbon atoms are joined by six electrons in the carbon to carbon triple bond the answers are a 2 and 3 only b 1 and 3 only c 1 2 and 3 d 1 and 2 only e 3 only your time starts now time up the correct answer is 1 2 and 3 In order to understand this question, let's look at the Lewis diagrams here. Now uh, we can see two carbon atoms bonded with two electrons. In this kind of a situation, the bond will be a single bond. When there are four electrons involved, the bond is a double bond. When there are six electrons involved, the bond is a triple bond. Therefore, the third answer is correct and when we consider the length we can see for the first single bond we have a 147 picometers of a length for the double bond we have 134 for the triple bond we have 120 that simply means carbon to carbon bonds increases in the order triple bond to double bond to the single bond right now the strength the bond energy the bond energy of double bond is less than twice the strength of carbon to carbon single bond let's say okay this is the bond energy 347 I am multiplying this by 2 it's nearly 700 but let's multiply 2 into 7 is 14 4 1 8 9 694 the bond energy of a double bond is less than the bond energy twice the single bond right so the second statement is also correct right let's move to the last question of the day how many integers n are there such that the difference between 2 root n and 7 is less than 1 the answers are 0 2 4 6 and 8 your time starts now Timer. The correct answer is 6.
how is it 6? Let's simplify. Right. Now we have 2 root n and 7. And they need the difference to be less than 1. That technically means 7 minus this part. Let's say it is x. Should be less than 1. Or else x minus 7 should be less than 1. Not equal. Right? x can be either 6 or either 8. Right? But we have to identify what is n over here. Therefore, I replace x with 2 root n. This part is here. Right? First, let's solve the left hand side. Okay, now we can see I have taken minus 7 to the right hand side. So, it has become a plus 7. 1 plus 7 is 8 and I then divide both the side by 2. So, we get root n and 4. I square both the sides. So, the root is removed. We have n to be less than 16. This is our first statement. Then the right hand side. Now, here you might get confused what I have done. I have taken 7 to the other side. When I bring 7, it becomes a minus 7. And then I change the symbol. When I change the symbols, the signs change as well. Initially, it is a negative sign at the left hand side for 2 root n. It changes to a positive sign. And uh, 1 minus 7 becomes 7 minus 1. Okay. Perfect. 7 minus 1 is 6. I divide both by 2. Root 10 is 3. I square both the sides. N is 9. Okay. Now, the next step. Let's write everything together. N should be lesser than 16. It is written. And N is greater than 9. N is greater than 9. It is also written. But they are not equal to 9 or 16. Therefore, N is equal to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. We have 6 integers which satisfy N. Therefore, the answer is 6. Perfect. It's mentions time. I feel. Please make video often. I enjoy your teachings because you explain in detail and show all working. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for your kind words. And um, I'm very happy that uh, you are enjoying the video. I hope um, we will do better in the future. And I have uh, seen your YouTube channel as well. You are doing really good. Uh, keep it up. And late in vlogs, please continue. Lessons are really helpful. Of course, we will do our best to support the community. And some people want it to happen. Some wish it would happen. Others make it happen. Decide in which category you are. You might be thinking of so many things. You might be wanting so many things. Uh, you need to make it happen. You have to realize a way to make your dreams come true. Therefore, work hard, work smart. And thank you so much for joining. I hope to see you very soon. I'm Andrew Anthony Sami. Visit our new design of the website, sprintertest.com. 
and uh, join our Facebook group. Follow us on Instagram. Have a nice study session ahead. Good luck.